Ah, the collector's edition, because why not turn collecting video games into an even more expensive hobby? Taking some semi-worthless junk and stuffing it in with a base product became so profitable in the gaming industry that the term collector's edition basically became synonymous with video games. So today, I want to take a look at some of my favorite collector's editions while also looking at some trends I've noticed over the years that make AAA games look lazy compared to a rising wave of indie titles. I've spent a lot of money on this stuff, okay? My interest in video game collector's editions definitely started with AAA titles, even though I only bought a few of them growing up. Getting some video game collectibles packaged in with a game I was already excited about was a great feeling, but most of the time, the games I was interested in either didn't have collector's editions, were ridiculously expensive, or only included a bunch of DLC codes. However, out of the few that I did collect, the Little Big Planet 2 collector's edition is definitely my favorite. It came with a cute Sackboy plushie, which is cool because the character is literally a plushie in the game, and some really nice bookends that I still use to keep games on my shelf. These items help demonstrate what I believe to be the key in designing a worthwhile collector's edition, theming. Neither of these relatively cheap objects are necessarily valuable, but that's never been the point. Collector's editions are made to please fans by giving them unique items related to a game's overall style. The objects included should have a bit more nuance and care than general merchandise that might be sold elsewhere. Even though I've never been a big Halo fan, I still have the Halo Reach limited edition hidden away on my shelf, and I think it serves as another great example of attention to detail. A big component of the Halo franchise has always been the lore, so the Halo Halo Reach Limited Edition is designed and packaged as an archive module. Contained inside its fun to open packaging is a sealed journal from Catherine Halsey, a famous scientist in the Halo universe. The book itself is nicely designed with a magnetic cover and string bindings and contains 200 pages of journal entries filled with story details and tons of illustrations. There are fake coffee stains on certain pages and a bunch of random shit stuffed in at the back, but my favorite detail is the two intentionally ripped and missing pages that were only included in less than five of the journals and published online six years later. And now I'm thinking about how stupid it sounds that I think a book with missing pages is somehow cooler than just a regular book. This style of collector's edition shows that the developers were willing to go the extra mile and care about the worlds they've created. Hell, if there was a 200 page lore book bundled with every new JRPG or Sonic release, you know damn well I'd be buying it. However, that just isn't happening with a majority of video games, and it feels as if AAA releases are becoming more and more lacking as time goes on. I can't believe Halo Reach and Little Big Planet 2 are almost a decade old. To put it shortly, collector's editions are all following the same formulas. One formula that I don't even want to bother discussing is the let's cram cheap objects into an insanely overpriced bundle edition, usually released for games by publishers like Ubisoft, Capcom, and Bethesda for the low low price of way too much fucking money. I don't care if you say it's from The Last of Us 2, that guitar is not worth $2300. I don't think I'd pay $2300 even if I could reach into the TV and take Sonic's shoes right off his feet. So instead, I'm gonna show off a couple of recent game releases I've picked up myself, because I think it helps to illustrate the other trend. It seems like video game developers said, alright, let's just make every single collector's edition from now on a steelbook case, a half-assed art book, and a CD with some of the game's music, even though we don't sell the entire soundtrack outside of Japan. Steelbooks are nice, but with many modern games getting day one steelbook releases for no extra cost, they don't feel all that special anymore unless something interesting interesting is done with their design. Sometimes companies just pull a yeah fuck it and substitute physical items for random DLC codes. I used the Cactuar summon once and then never again. I'm not trying to say every modern collector's edition that follows this format is inherently bad. Since they usually only cost $20 more than the standard edition, I think some of them do a great job, with Fire Emblem Three Houses being a perfect example. It loses a few points for the CD only including a small selection of of the game's music, but the steelbook is gorgeous and the art book is a hefty hardcover one that actually includes concept art. There's also a calendar in there, which I guess is theming, 
technically. The Final Fantasy VII Remake and Kingdom Hearts 3 Deluxe Editions fall into the eh category. The Final Fantasy VII Remake has a massive, incredible soundtrack, but it's impossible to include all of the music on one CD, which again leaves it with a small selection of music. It also doesn't include a digital download code for the soundtrack, which seems like a really easy bonus that developers could start throwing into collector's editions. In regards to both of these games, the steelbooks are fine, but the artbooks are severely lacking, with many pages just containing 3D renders of things in the game. Why would I waste my money on these when I could instead just buy a full official art book for around the same price as the collector's edition add-on? For 20 to 40 bucks, you can get high quality books with hundreds of pages of incredible concept art and tons of developer interviews that give insight into a game's design process. I could probably kill someone with the hardcover Mario Odyssey art book. And now we arrive at some of the worst collector's editions I own. While I adore Atlas games in the Persona series, the Persona Q2 Showtime edition has to be the biggest joke of a purchase I've made in my life. Ignoring the PSP Go, of course. Inside its generic box is a plushie that looks like it came out of a bootleg claw machine, a paperback art book that should just be called a We Ran Out of Time and Put Official Character Art on Each Page book, a deck of playing cards, okay, and a set of four plastic buttons. I literally had a toy as a kid that could make these kinds of buttons. What part of any of this appeals to someone dedicated enough to the Persona series to bust out their fucking 3DS again? again in 2019. That someone is me, by the way. This also happened with the Endless Night Collection double pack for the new Persona Rhythm games. While an integrated book and game case sounds good in theory, the quote-unquote art book is the same lazy garbage as Persona Q2. Official character renders, no concept art, and zero interviews, insight, or interesting text. I'm not sure if they were just looking to cut costs with this strange case, but they only included one disc holder with both games stacked on top of each other. Meanwhile, the Persona 4 Dancing All Night Collector's Edition had a full jewel case with two disc holders just for the damn soundtrack, but apparently they couldn't be bothered to do anything with the new ones. This kinda makes sense after playing the games though, as Persona 3 and 5 Dancing Dancing felt lacking compared to the original. And speaking of soundtracks, a rhythm game is the place where you definitely include the soundtrack in the collector's edition. So they did it with Persona 4 Dancing, but somehow managed to fuck it up with the new ones. They didn't even give me a digital download! Now, you may notice that this isn't the end of the video. That's because there are still great collector's editions being put out by developers who love their games and care about collectors enough to do more than the bare minimum. Can you guess what games I'm hinting at? Indie games. Yeah, of course it's indie games. The first indie collector's edition I want to take a look at is Hollow Knight, which may not even be recognizable as a video game case at first glance. That's because the box itself is one of the most interesting parts. It's covered in gold foil and has a little window for a cute metal brooch of the bug boy himself. It also includes a super cute cleaning cloth for the Switch and gold foil art prints, which arguably gave off the classic, I'll look at these once, nice, kind of feeling, but there's also a 14 page comic book for Quirrell, an old school game manual, and a fold out map that shows all of Hallow Nest. This collector's edition includes the exact kind of stuff I was hinting at earlier. They probably wouldn't sell a cute comic of a side character from Hollow Knight as its own product, but it's something fans of the series would be delighted to read and collect. Old game manuals capture that feeling of buying a new game as a kid and reading the manual in the car while you're waiting to get home and play it, or when you legitimately needed one for a Vice back before the advent of the internet. And the whole thing just looks beautiful, existing to be displayed. It's not just a big cardboard box with the regular cover art. Alright, alright, I've insulted Persona Q2 enough, give me the next one. If you've ever played Enter the Gungeon, there's a good chance you're very familiar with the Ammo Nomicon, the game's in-universe menu and database for the hundreds of weapons, items, enemies, and bosses you'll discover. So it might not come as a surprise when I tell you that the limited edition of Gungeon comes bundled with a real hardcover Ammo Nomicon. While this is the only thing included in the limited edition outside of the game itself, it's true to its limited name, as Special Reserve only produced 3,500 of them. Each one is individually numbered 
numbered on the first page alongside the game, and the book itself is a faithful recreation of the in-game version. This might just be my pure adoration for Enter the Gungeon speaking, but this is one of the coolest video game collectibles I own, and it's clear that the developers care about it too from the doodles scattered across its hundreds of pages. Finally, we come to what might be a current favorite in my collection, Celeste. Like the Hollow Knight Collector's Edition, the box is designed to be put on display, with a hook on the top that lets the included plush strawberry hang down as if it's floating inside the box. Since pretty much all video game music can be found online nowadays, if a Collector's Edition is gonna give me music, I either want the entire soundtrack so I can have a high quality version of it, or I want them to do something interesting. Well, it just so happens that Celeste did both. You know how the main secret collectibles in Celeste happen to be B-sides of cassette tapes? Well, they put the soundtrack on a cassette tape, with a super cute retro design and everything. And they finally included a digital download code! Why can't you be like this? Alongside the steelbook, there's a small poster, sewable patch, postcard, stickers, and a foil art print. Some of these definitely give off the, oh, that's kind of cute, but I probably won't ever use it vibe, but there's so much nice stuff included that I didn't really mind. However, since they included a recipe for strawberry pie, I naturally decided to mix some flour, sugar, and salt in a bowl, add some chopped butter and water, make it into some dough, then cut up some strawberries, mix them together with sugar, cornstarch, salt, lemon, juice and vanilla extract, pour the mixture into the pie crust, overlay the lattices, and put it in the oven for, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes at 425 and then an hour at 350. Yeah, it's pretty good. Maybe I'm biased here, but just seeing physical copies of indie games fills me with so much joy, and these collector's editions take that a step further. I remember playing random indies back on the Wii and PS3 growing up, and seeing how far they've come and the amount of detail the developers are able to put into these releases is super heartwarming. While some of these items may seem useless, again, it's the care put into them and the relevance they have to the game itself that make them worth the purchase. At the end of the day, a good collector's edition recognizes the hard work put into every facet of a game's existence, from the music to the artwork to the overall writing and design, with plenty of little details to make the most diehard fans feel like they bought something special. Now if you'll excuse me, 